everyone, I am here today with my trusty Colin Firth mug, back with the prices. I know it's been a hot minute. I've had this recorded for a few days, but I've been sick, so <laughs> we're just now getting to it, but that's okay. We are starting off with something a little bit exciting with the prices. So we actually did receive this genie lamp a week or two ago, and I've kind of been saving it for the right moment. However, I really kind of felt like since the prices have actually kind of like entered the upper class, it was okay for me to use the genie lamp. That is something that I kind of use in my rule stipulations is that you can't like use the genie lamp unless you're upper class and especially like you can't use the money from it because then you would just zip all the way up to the upper class real fast. Sophronia is here today saying hi to everyone. However, she is not exactly getting along with uh, Marcus at the moment and Speaking of not getting along, Julian is, as usual, being a little bit of a pill. He is, like, driving me a little bit crazy with his grumpy trait, to be honest. It's, um, it's a whole thing. Like, he is never happy and there's nothing I can do about it. So we just kind of have to deal with it. But everyone is otherwise kind of enjoying themselves. We have our maid, Elsie Sully, here. And even Leonora is here for a visit. So we do have um, a couple people over for the evening. It's just past dinner. And everyone's just kind of hanging out, relaxing, having a good time. And afterwards, this couple here recently married, sneaks off. We have Julian and Marion sneaking off to um, have a little fun. They are already pregnant, so it's not like they're actually trying for a baby because they already have a baby on the way, which is super exciting. I am so ready for another generation to be born. What, would that be generation four or five? Maybe four? Elsie prepares breakfast the next morning for everyone, and Marion begins the first signs of her pregnancy. That's right, she has some morning sickness and she is not exactly happy about it. Marcus is a little upset at the moment. Um, I think he has a lot of feelings about his daughter Brooke and his relationship with um, Molly. So we saw that Brooke is at the um, finishing school with her half-sisters, they don't really know that they're related. Leonora and Sophronia are really kind of the only ones who are aware of the situation. Now, I did decide it would be fun to check out the local um, watering hole, the local water and gardens. However, I forgot that it's actually like winter and so the water is frozen. We do see Louisa king having a complete breakdown she did just lose her husband to a heart attack so i mean we can't exactly blame her can we and look who is here it is teresa hello teresa teresa recently lost her partner charlotte she recently lost her partner charlotte holloway which is really upsetting um i do want to plan like some kind of regatta but i'm still trying to figure out how to make that happen so at the moment we're just kind of testing out some boats and we do decide to let Delphine enjoy a little calm boat ride on the water. I spent so much time landscaping and you can't even see the trees because they are all bare because it's winter, which is kind of unfortunate, but that's just kind of how it goes. It's fine. Um, Julian thinks about using the uh, diving board, but I haven't done it correctly. So um, he unfortunately cannot actually go swimming at the moment. I'm working on fixing it. It's really complicated and I have no idea what I'm doing. So if anyone has any advice, I will gladly take it. We do have some nice little picnicking spots here. Unfortunately, the second we get home, uh, Julian becomes mortal enemies with their maid, which is great. I really wanted that. Like we don't actually have a lot of eligible maids in New Whitby. And so for Julian to cause this many issues with Elsie, I'm just kind of like, are you serious? Like there are only a, a handful of maids we can pick from without me just creating new maids. So these two cannot keep their hands off of each other. And as a quick reminder for the family tree, I know that some of you guys really like seeing the family trees. Here's where we're at. So you can see that Marcus has his daughter, Brooke, along with his daughter, um, Leonora. Then we have Julian, Prudence, and Lilith. And Marcus has lost two of his sisters. That's Alma and Emma. 
And then he does have two sisters still living, and that's Sophronia and Teresa. So that's just a little bit of where we are. I, yeah. Okay, so Julian's kids would be Generation 4. And Leonora is currently the only one who actually has children. That's Lisette and Josephine. So these two get into a proper slapping fight, and there's pretty much nothing I can do to keep them from fighting with each other at this point. Like, it is a proper issue. I just can't... They... They just get stuck in this loop of slapping each other, and I, at this point, realize that maybe it's time for Elsie to leave. Also, Marcus and Delphine are constantly in and out of love and in and out of crushes with each other. I cannot keep up with how many times they lose their romance and then gain it again. It's it's a mess. I, I don't know what to do about them. It's so bad. <laughs> And here I am sending Elsie to look for her own place. Um, she is moving out, unfortunately. I think Marcus has a lot of regrets about it. He's kind of like, so you're looking for a new place to live? Like, I'm sorry it comes to this, but you can't get along with my son and this is kind of a deal breaker. But if it were up to Marcus, I think he would keep her because she's a good maid. She does her job well. It's um, it's very unfortunate. So we are interviewing a new maid. This is Anne Marshall. I had to create her because there's no one else in the neighborhood that can actually act as a maid at the moment. Oh, it's so frustrating. I can't believe I had to make a maid when we had a perfectly good maid here. Thank you, Julian. I have a feeling that Julian is going to be like my least favorite heir in the entire neighborhood, but it's fine. It's fine. We've got great things going on. So Anne is um, a little argumentative with them during the interview, but they don't really have a choice, so they do give her the job. I also think she's adorable, so I don't mind having her in town. This is one of my like newer skin tones, um, I think from my third pack. And the skin tone packs that I have are available. If you're on the Discord, I have them uploaded there. There's like 125, 130, something like that skin tones, and they're all geneticized in order. So we do have a lot of options if you're looking for an aggressive amount of diversity like I am. So here we have some exciting news. Miss Marion is popping into her first or second trimester and she doesn't look very pregnant because of her dress. Um, although I love that color on her so I just kind of wanted to keep her in it. Laziness, what can I do? And here we have Marcus talking about the fact that their maid had to move out and be essentially released from her position because of Julian and Julian's like, I didn't like her. What are you gonna do about it? And Marcus is over here kind of like, listen, son, the state of our house is a disaster. We need help. So because the maid and Julian kept fighting constantly, we didn't have anyone really like picking up the house. So Miss Marshall has a lot of work to do around the house before things are actually like taken care of and picked up. The laundry has gotten out of control. If you have not downloaded the laundry mod yet, I absolutely recommend it. It is like one of the best things ever um, in that it adds an exponential amount of chaos to my hood. Um, and you guys know I love a little bit of chaos, so I don't mind it. And we don't send her all the way downstairs to like hang the laundry outside. We're just kind of hanging it on the window um, because she is on the third floor doing the laundry. So I just thought it would be easiest. Now, Miss Marshall does get up before the rest of the household. Um, however, as soon as these two get up, they fall in love again. So didn't know they hadn't fallen in love. Um, interesting move guys very interesting move and it is time to send the family out for a little adventure we are going to the wendland lawson theater because we have something really exciting happening we have a um woman named honey breves who has come in all the way from scandinavia to perform on the piano and um miss beatrice 
Lawson is going to be playing the flute along with her. So we have some exciting things happening. We have a lot of people from town. We have the girls from the finishing school. We have all of the Lawson boys. Here we have Marius and Theodore. And we have the new mayor in town. There's Brooke and there's Lilith and Prudence. It's so good to see them again. Leonora, Teresa. So we do have a couple of the boxes available and we have a few people in the bottom boxes. I don't have anyone in the top boxes at the moment um, because the doors disappeared and I couldn't figure out how to fix it, but we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. This is Ms. Breves. She is an absolute treasure when it comes to playing the piano. She is a pretty famous composer and she's here just on a visit on a tour around England. And we see also, I probably should have dressed Beatrice in black or something, but I forgot to. So here's Beatrice playing the flute. Now, a lot of you guys have commented that Marius, who is in the back here in the blue, would be really good with Lilith. So we do kind of have a little plan going on between them. So I want them to like formally meet um, today. We do have everyone kind of go upstairs for a little bit of tea and biscuits and food after the performance. A lot of kids are just hanging out downstairs and chatting. And here we do have Marius being introduced to Lilith Rice. I think they would be absolutely perfect together and it's also a very good social match because Marius is technically the heir to the Lawson household and the prices would be a really great match for the Lawsons at this point um, especially now that the prices are joining the upper class which is really exciting I can't believe like generation four and we've already joined the upper class like I feel that I feel like that happened so fast however considering the fact that the neighborhood is showing signs of imploding. I feel like it's probably good that we actually got there when we did. And these two absolutely hit it off. They develop crushes, they fall in love, and they just have a nice um, harmless little hang out in the yard by themselves. No one really notices that they're gone and they're just generally being sweet together. So it's not like, it's not gonna cause a scandal. That's not my intent here. We're not allowing them to cause a scandal. Although this is, this is, pushing the lines a little bit if we're being honest like you guys should probably tone it down <laughs> just a smidge just a little smidge so that is all for the theater now I did take it upon myself to do a little bit of remodeling at the price household I thought about moving them out and moving them into like a new house but then I would have to build it and you guys know how long it takes me to decorate big houses like the king like the king house that I decorated that they moved into, it took me months to decorate that. It's so big and I just, I wasn't in the mood. So we added um, a little extra space on the first floor, on the second floor, and we have like a proper separate kitchen now. And then I moved the, um, the drawing room over to the other side. So the drawing room is a touch bigger. It's still a little bit small. And then we do have a back parlor. This is kind of an informal drawing room where they work on their skilling. They don't really receive guests there. I did get Julian and Marion a bigger bedroom. And then we also have like a proper front nursery. And this is where the kiddos can hang out and play during the day. Now, thankfully, Miss Marshall is actually getting along with Julian so much better. Like I'm honestly really, really shocked and impressed that we're not having any issues here. So everyone's back at home. It's breakfast the next morning and we're all enjoying some pancakes. We're still getting to know Miss Marshall so she's allowed to eat at the table with us, no questions there. And we have Marion who is in her second trimester. So we will be having a baby fairly soon. Also look, we still have that portrait of Miss Leonora. I miss Leonora, she's a good sim. And of course we have plenty more laundry to go around. There's quite a bit of laundry to get control of. I do have a mod that's called the macro mod. And if you don't have macro, it allows you to just like click one button and the sim automatically starts cleaning everything in the house. It's incredible and it is now functional alongside the laundry mod so there won't be any like glitches or errors there. Here these two lose their relationship again. Oh, you 
Marcus, you rejected her for a makeout? She's your wife! And she's Delphine! She's gorgeous! She's like way out of your league. <sighs> I... I'm at my wit's end with them. I don't know what to do anymore. Like, I think Marcus is just really feeling kind of down. <laughs> Look at that. Their, rom their romance is back again. I think Marcus is just feeling really down about his lost relationship with Molly because he was really in love with Molly and losing Molly as a friend was also really hard. Now it is also time for babies. I am so excited and very hopeful that it is not quads, even though I know all of my viewers are very excited about quads. I am not. <laughs> Although that's mostly in Stream Freak Cross. So we're going to do random here, see what we get. And oh, thank God, it's only one baby. What a relief. I just... I, I want to have a household without a million babies. And we have a beautiful little baby. And it's a baby boy. So we have our heir in the household here. We're going to name him Raphael Tillman. And we'll call him Raffi. I actually, I had a professor in undergrad whose, names was, whose name was Raffensperger and we called him Raff. So maybe we'll just call this one Raff. Um, Raffy, Rafa, Raff. Let me know what you think. He has the Holloway eyes, which is incredible because I just, I wasn't expecting Holloway eyes. I don't know. It's amazing how many generations those Holloway eyes seem to be dominant in. So here's a better look at him. He's got some black hair. He might have some sort of curly hair like his mama. We'll see as he grows up, but he's absolutely gorgeous. And it looks like Marion is having morning sickness again. Girl, I didn't even know you were pregnant again. You literally just had a baby. So um, she's pregnant, I checked. <laughs> I didn't even know that they had tried for a baby. Like, I honestly had no idea that that happened. So cool. Um, and we do decide to have a little christening, um, a little baptism. So we invite the Averys over. Here's Augusta um, Holloway, who married the Averys heir, Lawrence, and um, Marion's parents. Julian, despite being wealthy, um, is panhandling in front of the house because he is in constant aspiration failure and I don't know what to do with him. You can just see Marcus staring at him like, this is my son. Great. I, I'm so proud. This all turned out so well. And he's over here like, please stop panhandling. We have enough money. We just renovated the house. We are not poor. Like seriously, get a hold of yourself. And we have um, Parson or I think Priest Smith, Father Smith. We have Father Smith here from St. Catherine's Cathedral. And he is giving the little baby Raffi a baptism. So he's baptizing him in the sink. This is as close as we can get to a baptism. If anyone knows of a baptism mod, hit me up um, because we are making baptisms a uh, crucial point to the Catholic Church that we are raising. Although I think it would be, although maybe that's not. I don't actually know much about the Catholic Church. And these two cannot keep their hands off of each other. It's actually like they must be made for each other um, because it takes a very special type of person to like Julian. <laughs> I am not one of those special types of people, so it's kind of shocking. And these two are fighting again, just, you know, as happens. But it's almost time to send the Averys home. It was nice to have them over for the day. We don't see a whole lot of the Averys recently, and it wouldn't be an event without a death. So, unfortunately, it's time for Delphine to leave us, which just feels, oh, it's so hard because she's not ready to go. She wasn't in a platinum aspiration. She doesn't feel like she was able to accomplish all that she wanted in her life, which is, like, honestly really, really heartbreaking. She left a ton of money for her will, and so the prices are doing great financially. There's no issue there. Um, and you can even see Marcus is really upset. I think Marcus has a lot of regrets about the way that he handled his marriage, the affair. Um, there's just a lot happening. So that is going to be all for today's episode. Also, sorry about the mess behind me. Please ignore that. <laughs> 
Um, I hope you liked today's episode. If you did and you want to make sure you see a little bit more, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you next time with the Kings. Bye.